So you enter into Jannah and you want to visit the neighborhood of the Prophet So when you get to the house of the Prophet and his family, you're going to notice there's another family there. And this is the family that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he has chosen in the Quran. And it is Ali Imran, the family of Imran. So the Prophet said, Al Hasan wal Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahl al Jannah. The two masters of the youth in Al Jannah are Al Hasan wal Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And they are leading all of the young people of Jannah. He said, Illa ibn al Khala, Isa wa Yahya, except for the two cousins, Isa alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam. So imagine of the youth of paradise, Al Hasan wal Hussein, and then you have the family of Imran. Yahya and Isa, Jesus and John And then the Prophet said, Wa Fatima tu, Sayyida tu Nisa'i Ahlil Jannah. And Fatima is the master of all women in paradise. She's the queen of the women of Jannah. Illa ma kana min Maryam ibn Imran, except for Maryam alayhi salam. Because remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Maryam, Inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa al alameen, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above all of the women of all time. And so, in the highest level, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the noble Ahl al Bayt, and the family of Imran together. And the Prophet ﷺ says that the leaders of the women in Jannah are four people, Maryam, Fatima, Asya, and Khadija. And the Prophet ﷺ, of course, as he talks about them, each one of them has a virtue. So when you talk about Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she resembled the Prophet ﷺ more than any other human being. And when you talk about Maryam alayhi salam, Maryam alayhi salam was this pure woman who led the way with her ibadah and was slandered in this world. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors her in ways that we cannot imagine. And then you talk about Asya alayhi salam who gave up the luxury of the palace of Fir'aun and all of that comfort. And she said, Rabbi bin li indaka baytan fil jannah. Oh Allah, build for me a house with you in paradise. So imagine now how that special house looks like with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you used to read about in the Quran when you were in this dunya. And then you have Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Khadija was the woman who received the Prophet sallallahu in her arms when the Prophet sallallahu first received revelation. And subhanAllah, if you read about Khadija in the days of Jahiliya, in the days of ignorance, Khadija radiallahu anha used to have this famous house in the days of ignorance that had a green silk pavilion right in front of the house. And that was a sign of two things. Number one, her extraordinary wealth. And so it was just there for beauty and adornment. Number two, even in the days of ignorance, Khadija radiallahu anha was a generous woman. So it was a sign for the poor to come and to receive donations from her. And she would pay the dowries of the poor people in Mecca at the time and whatever it may be. So she had this distinct house in the days of ignorance. And now you walk into Jannah and you see this distinct house of qasab, of pearl, that only Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha has. And subhanAllah, look at the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She gave up that distinct house in the days of ignorance for now a distinct house in Jannah that all of us can admire. So you're going up to Jannah, you're meeting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha who has a special house unlike the house of anyone else and this home that Asiya has and the family of Imran. But you know, when you read about Medina and it feels like Jannah when you talk about it, you would have loved to go visit the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his various hujurat, in the homes of his wives. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the reward for the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Nu'tiha ajraha marratain wa a'tadna laha rizqan karima. That should they be dutiful to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will give her her reward two times and we will give her a generous sustenance on the Day of Judgment. And Imam bin Kathir rahimahullah, he says that the reward that Allah is talking about is a special place in Jannah, in Al-Illiyeen, in the highest place. So just like you had the Hujurat in Medina that the companions used to come around and they would know that these are the dwellings of the wives of the Messenger 
Now in Jannah, the neighborhood of the Hujurat, the neighborhood of the homes of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, is in the highest level. So that's the family of the Prophet ﷺ. And you may want to go visit him in the guest house from Aisha radiallahu anha or Hafsa radiallahu anha one day or whatever it may be. And then you have those that the Prophet ﷺ said were the 10 promised paradise, Al-Ashar Al-Mubashireen. And we should memorize these 10 companions' names and we should teach our children to memorize them as well. And they are Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Talha and Az-Zubair, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Sa'id ibn Zayd and Abu Ubaid al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. These are the 10 famous promised companions of paradise. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the first two of them, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, will be the leaders of all of the men of paradise. So you have the leaders of the men, you have the leaders of the women, you have the leaders of the youth, al Hassan wal Hussein, and now you have the 10 promised paradise of the companions. And how lofty is their position? Rasulullah ﷺ, on the night of Al-Isra' and Mi'raj, he was walking through Jannah and he saw this beautiful golden palace and he thought, this must be for me. So he asked for the keys, right? He said to Jibreel alayhi salam, can I go inside? And Jibreel alayhi salam said, actually, this is the house of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu said that I remembered how jealous of a man Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was. And so I immediately moved away from the house. And Umar radiallahu anhu starts to cry and he says, can anyone be jealous from you, O Messenger of Allah? Like he felt bad that even though the Prophet ﷺ just gave him the bushra, gave him the glad tidings of a golden palace in paradise, that the Prophet ﷺ did not feel like he could walk into that home. Like who am I that you would be embarrassed from me, O Messenger of Allah wasallam? So imagine the golden palace of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who is such a beloved companion of the Prophet ﷺ and someone that the Ummah loves so much. And then you move over from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu and Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Talha wa Zubair, Jaraya fil Jannah. My two neighbors in Jannah are Talha and Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And there's something very special to this because those were the two young men who defended the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through and through. As Zubair being the first one to stand in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a sword and to protect him. And Talha radiallahu anhu, who was literally called the walking shaheed, the walking martyr, because in Uhud he was catching the arrows coming at the Prophet ﷺ and suffered tens of wounds throughout his body, trying to protect the Prophet ﷺ. And now they're the neighbors of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, who are some of the other people the Prophet ﷺ saw in Jannah and gave us specific scenes of? You have the shuhada from the Sahaba, the martyrs from the companions. And it's one of my favorite narrations. The Prophet ﷺ said, I entered into Jannah and I saw Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala anhu with two wings flying amongst the angels. And then he said, and I looked down and I saw Hamza radiallahu anhu reclining on a couch. So imagine Sayyid al-Shuhada, the master of all martyrs, Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu reclining on his couch and Ja'far radiallahu anhu who lost his arms and carried the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah with the stubs of his arms. And now he's flying in Jannah with the angels. And as for Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hibbu Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved one of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I entered into Jannah and I was welcomed by this young girl. And I said, to whom do you belong? And she said, I'm for Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, who the Prophet ﷺ said the throne of Allah shook out of joy when the soul of Sa'ad returned to it. Rasulullah ﷺ was one day wearing this beautiful garment that was gifted to him by a foreign leader. And as the Sahaba were looking at it and they were enamored by it, the Prophet ﷺ said, you think this is beautiful? He says, Wallahi, the manadil, the handkerchief of Sa'ad bin Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Jannah is better than this garment. That's the thing that you blow your nose with. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu's handkerchief was so beautiful that the Prophet said it's more beautiful than any garment that you would see. Rasulullah also one day is approached by a mother. And this is the mom of Haritha ibn Suraqa radiallahu anhu, who was a young man that was struck by an arrow in the battle of Badr. 
And she said, Ya Rasulullah, tell me what happened to my son. If he's in Jannah, then I'm going to be patient. But if he's not in Jannah, then I'm just going to cry and cry and cry. And the Prophet said, Ya Um Haritha, Jannah is not just one level. And it's not just that your son made it to Jannah, but your son reached Al Firdaus Al A'la. And so you find Haritha ibn Suraqa, who was struck by an arrow in Badr. And the Prophet ﷺ says that he's in Al Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that place as well. Allahumma ameen. And then, you know, the Prophet ﷺ used to walk around and listen to the recitation of his companions in Al Madinah. And Rasulullah said, I entered into Jannah and I heard someone reciting the Quran. And I said, Who is that? Who's that beautiful voice? So imagine you're walking the alleys of Jannah and you hear the recitation of the Quran. And they said, Harith ibn Nu'man, the righteous man, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet said, Kadhalik al bir, Kadhalik al bir. Indeed, this is a righteous man. Indeed, this is a righteous man. So you may hear the recitation of the Quran of some of the Sahaba in paradise as well. The next category are the sincere seekers of truth that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned lofty positions for in Al-Jannah. The first of them, Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu, that noble rabbi of Medina who embraced Islam as soon as the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina. Rasulullah ﷺ said, Abdullah ibn Salam is the 10th of the first 10 to enter into Jannah. The 10th person to enter Jannah, subhanAllah, is this man Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu and the Prophet ﷺ gave him the glad tidings of Jannah on multiple occasions. Then you have those people that embraced monotheism, but they didn't live to accompany the Prophet ﷺ in his mission. The first of them is Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Rasulullah ﷺ said that this man who embraced the way of Ibrahim ﷺ, even before the Quran was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, he said on the day of judgment, when the ummas are lined up behind their prophets, Zayd ibn Amr will be an ummah by himself. What does this look like in Jannah? The Prophet Sallallahu said, I entered into Jannah and I saw that Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl had two levels of paradise all by himself radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Can you imagine someone who reserves two levels of Jannah all by himself? And some of the scholars said because he believed in Ibrahim alayhi salam, and then he believed in Muhammad وسلم, even before Muhammad وسلم, received the revelation. Speaking of whom, Waraq ibn Nufal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was an old man when he confirmed the mission of the Prophet وسلم, who he had been waiting for as a messenger of Allah, but he was too old to serve alongside the Prophet وسلم. And Rasulullah said, do not speak ill of Waraqa for I have seen that he has one or two gardens in Jannah all by himself. And then you have those that struggled with the Prophet Wasallam, And who other than Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyid al-Mu'addineen, the master of the Mu'addins on the Day of Judgment. And Rasulullah said, I entered into Jannah and I heard footsteps ahead of me. And I said, Ya Jibreel, what is that sound? And he said, those are the footsteps of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And some of the scholars, they said that the wisdom of that is in Medina. When the Sahaba saw Bilal radiallahu anhu walking to the masjid to do the adhan, he was preceding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So just like he used to do that in Medina, he's doing that now in Jannah as well radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then finally, you have those companions that just took advantage of opportunities when they presented themselves to them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said, I saw myself entering into Jannah and immediately I saw Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha, the wife of Abu Talha and the mother of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhum. So subhanAllah, this woman who gave her son in service to the Prophet sallallahu and Abu Talha radiallahu anhu, who gave his best garden, now they have that garden that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them in return. And you can enter it and see it for yourself. And you can remember it. That's the garden that Allah was saying, You will not achieve the reward of righteousness until you spend of that which you love. Here is that garden now. And speaking of gardens, you may want to visit the garden of Abu Dahdah radiallahu anhu, who the Prophet ﷺ said, how many date palm trees are in Jannah for Abu Dahdah radiallahu anhu. So you see this huge garden of palm trees in Jannah. And you remember that's the story of Abu Dahdah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. 
And you may want to meet those sincere seekers along the way who just volunteered themselves for an amazing reward in the moment that the Prophet Sallallahu said, who wants it? Rukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who when he heard the Prophet Sallallahu say that 70,000 people will enter into Jannah without any form of questioning and any form of punishment, he said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua that I'm amongst them. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Anta minhum, you are amongst them. And another man said, what about me? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Sabaqaqa biha, Rukasha, Rukasha beat you to it. So Rukasha being amongst that lofty group of people that inshallah ta'ala, we can aspire to be amongst as well. And finally, there's one woman that you may want to meet. You remember that woman who suffered from epilepsy and she used to have seizures. And when she would have seizures, her hijab would fall. And she came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she was just an unknown Abyssinian woman. She said, Ya Rasulullah, sometimes I have seizures. And when I have seizures, atakashaf, I'm exposed. Can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure me? And the Prophet sallallahu said, listen, O woman, I can make dua and you will be cured. Or you can be patient and you have Jannah guaranteed for you. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, if that's the case, I'll take the guaranteed Jannah. But can you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that at least when I suffer a seizure, I'm not exposed. So subhanAllah, she cares about her hijab even as she wants her guaranteed Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, for you is that. So imagine how many people that you will be meeting from the Sahaba, whose names maybe you didn't even know, but whose stories went on to inspire some of the greatest people in the history of Islam. And now you're in their neighborhood. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati